Welcome to Greater Faith, where we are moving our faith into action. Here at Greater Faith, we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, to maintain the worship of God, and to inspire all persons a love for Christ, a passion for righteousness, and a consciousness of their duties to God and their fellow human beings. We pledge our lives to Christ and covenant with each other to demonstrate His Spirit through praise, worship, faith, and ministry to the needs of the people of this church and the community. Now let's usher the Spirit by giving God the ultimate praise.
This is a moment in black history. Shirley Crystal was the first African-American woman elected to the first House of Representatives. She was elected in 1968 and represented the state of New York. She broke ground for four years later in 1972 when she was the first mayor party Af African-American candidate and the first female candidate for the, for the president of the United States. Amen. Give him another hand, y'all. Black history, we got to we have to keep this known and we have to keep it circulated because they are trying to pull it out. Uh, I said, I ask that everyone in the sanctuary stand this morning for the reading of the Lord's word. We're going to do our scripture and our prayer and our uh, mission statement at this time. Our scripture this morning be coming from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven, verse number nine. And I will be reading from the uh, from the NLT version this morning. Deuteronomy 7 and 9. Amen. And God's word reads this morning. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes in his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. Amen. The word of God for the people of God this morning. May we be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Most gracious Father God, we thank you, Father God, for this Sunday morning, Father God. Father God, we just ask this morning to come into this house, Father God, and have your way today, Father God. Father God, we just ask that you just continue to bless greater faith, Father God. Father God, we ask that you bless this lead servant, the word that you are giving him today, Father God, to allow him to break it down and make it plain so that we can use it to better our lives, Father God, or tell someone else about you. Father God, we just ask that you just bless this service today in each and every way that you see possible. Father God, we ask that you, uh, that you bless every household represented here today, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray and I praise this morning. Amen. We're going to do our mission statement at this time, and our mission statement reads, we the, people of greater, we the people of greater faith believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and the beliefs of the Christian faith, <clears throat> to maintain the worship of God and inspire all persons, a love for Christ, a passion for righteousness, and a consciousness of their duty to God and to their fellow human beings. We pledge our lives to Christ in covenant with each other to demonstrate his spirit through praise, worship, faith, and ministry to the needs of the people of this church and to the community. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is another day that we should be glad that we are here. We all made it, we see each other, we should be happy. We're gonna tell the God, tell God that we love him this morning, amen? Amen.
yahoo.com once again our cash app is dollar symbol faith greater and our paypal is greater faith 2018 at yahoo.com
Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Father God, we thank you for the gifts that we're given today. Father God, we just ask you to allow us to use these for the upkeep and upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Come on, y'all, let's praise God. Amen. Can we sit up on our feet and give God some praise? Amen. Come on, y'all can do better than that. I just hear one side giving God praise. We got another, we got two sides here. 
Come on, come on. Y'all can do that. Has God been good to you? Can you give God some praise if God has been good to you? Amen. I want to thank each and every person that is tuned in, every person that's in this place of worship this morning. We want to thank our praise team that surrendered and gave up a great worship and praise. Lord, make me a house, a house of prayer. Amen. And the last part of that song says, day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day. Come on, y'all. I want to pray day and night and night and day. I just want to keep praying and telling God, thank you, God, for what you have done for me. God, amen. Listen, we go through some battles. We go through some struggles. We go through some things in our life where we have to pray day and night and night and day. We got to keep praying, y'all. Amen. Because the battles and struggles that we are up against, it is not our battle. It is not our warfare. Amen. But we just have to pray day and night and night and day. Come on, y'all say with me. Day and night and night and day. Amen. And give God some praise. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. If he brought you out of some things, he brought you over some hills, brought you out of a bed of affliction, if he woke you up this morning, I'm so thankful that I'm looking at some alive people and not some dead people. I'm so glad I didn't get the phone call that none of you didn't wake up this morning, but why you got the breath in your body, why you still can move your hands, you should be rejoicing, you should be praising him, amen, that it was not you that didn't stay in your bed, but you got up. And you, you start to move, you start moving around, and now look at you are in the place of the Lord. Come on, y'all. Can you worship with me? Come on. Can we just give God some praise? I'm really happy to, I'm, I'm really happy to see all of y'all. I really am. But I'm really happy to see Zena. Amen. I'm glad that Zena is here. We've been praying for Sister Zena. She is here. And we just want to say thank you, God, for what you have done and what you are getting ready to do in her life. Uh, good spirit. She has a great spirit. Um, she was the one that we met, and she didn't pay for our, our ticket at the Cheesecake Factory. Uh, and she is here with us right now. Zeno, it is glad to see you. And all we can tell you right now is just hang on. Yes. God got you. Amen. Hang on in there. Amen. Amen. And always good to see my nephew and my niece and my uncle over here as well. Amen. They are here. Amen. It's always great to see them. And it's always great to see each and every, every last person that's here at Greater Faith. If you have your Bibles, I, I hope that you got your Bibles. And um, if you got your phones, you can get away with it. Now, don't be trying to sew big in your, your pocket over there for you. You have the Bibles here. At Greater Faith, we do believe in bringing back the hardback book and getting rid of getting rid of the phones. And every, the phones could be distracting and everything. I work off a tablet, so I keep my notes up, but I still got my Bible right here. We're gonna go to the uh, second, we're gonna go to Second Timothy. Four verses. Uh, I'm gonna pick it up at four. I'm, I'm gonna say Second Timothy 16, four and 16. I'm gonna pick it up 16 and read through the 18 verse. Second Timothy four and 16. Starting at the 16. Second Timothy four, 16. Do 18. Yes, ma'am. Second Timothy 4, picking up at the 16th verse. Continue through the 18th. We are all standing, so there's no need for me to say, let us all stand. We are all standing. Here at Greater Faith, to our visitors and family and friends, I know what we do. We take the Bible, pause it for one second, put your finger in that particular passage right there. If you find it, Second Timothy is towards the rear of the book. Take the Bible, stick it high in the air. Greater faith and family help me say, wave them like we just don't care. Amen. We have our Bibles with us and we don't care who is watching. We don't care who sees us with our Bible. This is our, this is our sword. This is our weapon in time that we are faced with trouble. Amen. Second Timothy, Second Timothy 4 verses 16 through the 18. God word reads. The first time I was brought before the judge, no one came with me. Everyone abandoned me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and gave me strength so that I might preach the good news in its entirety for all the Gentiles to hear. And he rescued me from certain death. Yes, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and, bring, and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. 
All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May God be a blessing to the readers and ears and doers of his own divine word. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Church says, Amen. Amen. This wasn't your original sermon for today. The original sermon was coming out of the book of Genesis 35 today. The original sermon was speaking about one Joseph who was working in Potiphar's house. In the original sermon, Potiphar gave Joseph basically the dominion over his household. Potiphar told Joseph and said, told Joseph, you can have everything in this house but don't touch my wife. And then in doing so, Joseph pretty much is um, served the master. You have to know the story of Joseph. Joseph has found his way from man all type of adversity, meaning that his family had placed him and put him inside of a well, only to be rescued by a group of people that we call a modern day uh, trafficking. And he was sold into the Egyptian king household. The original sermon was entitled, again, um, The Desire is Too Expensive. But while I was on the phone talking to my cousin last night, the sermon switched. There was another voice that was speaking. I even called my cousin the Reverend. And um, it switched and God gave me, gave me confirmation to change this up to 2 Timothy 4, verse, verses 16 to 18. And when you hear this verse 16, this 4 and 16, you will see that it's okay for you to stand alone sometimes. It's okay for you to be by yourself at times. It's okay for you to go do some of the stuff that you are going through. You have to realize who is at your defense. Amen. You have to know who has your back. You have to know that that there is a power that's working behind the scene uh, that you cannot see. You don't have to always entertain every attack that comes up on you. You don't necessarily have to put yourself in every battle that is facing you. You just have to stand alone sometimes and know that he is God and he's God all by himself. You don't have to come out of the character uh, or be a different person just because you're getting attacked. Because oftentimes you have to realize where the attack is coming from. You have to understand what is fueling the attacks. You have to understand the person that the spirit is working on to cause the attack to come to you. And here we see that our great guy by the name Paul is writing the church again and he's closing it out. Church, sometimes it does it. it sometimes it seems as though like you're standing alone in conflicts of life. Amen. It seems so like when we turn around, we're standing alone in conflicts of life, meaning that I thought that I could turn and find out that I may have family and friends that will be there for me, only to find out that this battle is something that I have to do on my own. Meaning is that I don't need anyone to take up for me. I don't need anyone to what fight my battles for me. Often we have family members, we have friends, we have um, co-workers, we even have church members that want to step in and fight a battle for you. But you never know what God is doing. You know, never know what's taking place behind the scene, how this is going to play out. But we just have to remain cool. Can we just say that with me? We just have to remain cool cool. I, I don't need for you, Lady Dansby, to jump in and fight a battle that God is already fighting. You understand? Zena, I don't need for you to pull out your gun or out your knife and, and go to war for me. Nephew, I just need for you to stand still and stand and just wait until God has moved. Am I talking to anybody? I, I don't need for you to do anything because I have to go do this on my own. Amen. In order for me to be the man or even for the ladies, to, for the woman, uh, in order for you to be the woman that God is going to use and God is working on, you will have to stand alone by yourself. I, I, I keep telling you that if you see me struggling, if you see me suffering, just what? Walk on by. Come on, y'all. If you see me, if, if you see me crying sometimes, if you see me uh, had to what? Uh, re, uh, re, 
like I said, if I had to go back somewhere else by myself, uh, uh, just retreat is the word I want to say. If you see me retreating from you sometimes, know that I'm doing it because God is working on me. The old thing is that the old saying is that um, don't don't judge me because God is not what finished or done with me yet. You have to understand that God usually work on us in a way that sometimes people may not understand. We get attacked where people truly don't understand sometimes why we're getting attacked. But everybody look at you and say that you are a man of God, you pray, you go to church, you pay your tithes, you're a woman of God, you serve him, you pray, and every day, night and day, like the song said, night and day, you pray to him. But why are you are the one that's always coming down, being afflicted, or always having conflicts in your life? Why is the enemy or the adversary using family and friends to try to bring you down from the status that God has put you on? Why is it seen as though that you can't pay your bills, you can't get ahead, your business is not prospering, your church ain't going nowhere? Why is it that uh, you are going through all this mess? And man, even sometimes, God fearing and believe people, we don't always have the answer. But one thing that we can tell those people that are always watching us is what? God is up to something. I got to have somebody right now to say, God is up to something. Just because you see me going through it and I'm not going in the town, just know that I am a believer because I know that in the end that I'm going to win. In the end, I'm going to come out of this what better and stronger than I was before I went into it. Do I got some believers in here right now? Said so I've been like Joseph in the pit. I've been in the palace. I've been at the top of my game and somehow that Look, I'm in a status right now where I'm trusting and depending on God. You don't understand the reason why that these things are happening. I don't know the reason why these things are happening. But one thing for sure, I know that in the end, God is going to get the glory. Come on. God is going to get the victory. God is going to get the praise. Amen. Because I'm not going to fold up on the pressure. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to walk away. I'm going to stand firm where God has me. This is a battle deep that I have to what? Stand and fight on, on my own. And at times, like I said, you, 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 it seems like these, you're standing alone in these conflicts of life that keep happening happen over and over and as society appears increasingly set in the opposition to your faith. Society is not going to always line up with your faith. Society is not going to always do what God wants society to do. Society is your opposition. Society, the world that you live in, is against you. You know, you proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. Society said, shh, don't say that name in a public place. You say that God uh, created everything. They said, mm -mm, evolution created everything. Am I talking to somebody? You said that God is the creator of life as well as the finisher of life. They said that it is only but a sensual, some type of scientific thing that, that can give you the answer that you're seeking, that you're looking for. But if you're just like like me, you say, nah, it's something different about this place that I live in. When I call the name of Jesus, it seems as though demons and people who are un but who are unrighteous start to get nervous. Am I talking to somebody? It, it, it seems as though when I depend on Jesus, it seems like everything around me get nervous or everything that is not right seen as though it has to get somewhere amen it seen as though like when i put more of god fearing words on the inside of me the more that everybody around me start to act up i gotta be talking to somebody it, it, i gotta understand you have to understand that the closer that i get to god amen the farther that my family and friends get away from God. If I'm talking to somebody, he set me all by myself to go do something all by myself. Amen. And you may not be able to walk where I'm going or talk how I'm talking. Amen. Because you are not at the status where God has me. Amen. And the word of God said that even when a man takes his wife, he has to lead his family. Amen. Just as though I said that Jesus Christ, I may have to what? Lead my family. Amen. That may be my personal family. And that may be my what? Church family. Amen. But I stand. But I stand alone. I stand alone because God is taking me somewhere. I, I'm speaking in a singular form right now because if I say plural, that means that we all get what God is doing in our life. And at times that the adversary can tell that something special about you, Deacon, there's something unique about you because every day that I afflicted on you, you never gave up. Elder, there's something different about you. There's something unique about you. 
but because I inscripted sickness on your body and you still refuse to go down. Amen. There's something different about you, Maggie. There's something different about you, Greater Faith, because you still call that name of Jesus that I try my best to turn you against. Amen. Who are you? You think you're better than everybody. You think that you know everything when it comes to this word of God. Amen. I, I heard it maybe a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, amen. Who, who are you? You're, you're not God. I, I'm making it personal. You're, you're not God. These are not your people. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. You're, you're not God. And, and I got to think to myself, no, I'm not God, but I'm made into God's image. Amen. Meaning is that God has placed me and gave me place over everything, dominion on this earth. So I'm not God, but I am made into his image. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? The same that I have on the inside of me is the same thing that my father have. Amen. The same thing that I do by lifting up his holy divine name is the same thing that my father does. Am I talking to somebody? The same stuff that I do, the same stuff that I go through is the same stuff that Jesus went do. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Some friends and families even rejected Jesus. Amen. Now you got friends and family are what? Rejecting you. I'm not going to talk to this group. Amen. I told you this is about me today. Amen. Because I have to stand alone in this battle. Amen. As a God fearing man. Meaning is that you don't understand these attacks. Uh, we've been trying to figure out where these attacks came from. But here I put it in Jesus' hand. Jesus said that in order for you to be able to elevate you're going to have to be persecuted. Am I talking to somebody? In order for you to move from here and there, you're going to have to go through some struggles. You're going to have to go through some rejection. Y'all not talking to me. Amen. In order for me to move you from the bottom and bring it to the top, just like I did Joseph. Amen. You're going to have to be what? Be denied. Amen. And half the time, family and friends don't understand the reason why they are acting that way towards you. Church members don't understand the reason why they are being used to keep certain things alive that should have been dead a long time ago. Am I talking to somebody? I knew it was going to be quiet in here today, amen. But you have to understand that the devil will use and also flick anybody that he can if he want to attack a certain person that he knows that has what? A calling on their lives. Every last of us in here has a calling on our lives. So the devil is going to try to use each and everything that he can to bring you down. You tell yourself that, listen, I let it go. I have what? Place it in God's hand. I turn it over to Jesus and let him work it out. And then you have a close confidant or a close family friend that comes back up and tell you what the person is still saying or what the person is still doing. Amen. This is what I said all a long time ago. If I let it go, why you can't let it go? Amen. If I have forgiven myself about it, amen, why you can't forgive me about it? Am I talking to somebody? Don't get quiet on me now, great of faith. Amen. I just want to be able to speak to you right now. Amen. Because we're going to flip this in a minute, but I want to make sure Sure that the preliminaries are set today. Amen. If I have forgiven myself of all the things that I said that I have done in that moment, now it's time for you to let it go. Amen. It, but here's the thing. Stop keeping mess alive that Jesus is already trying to clean up. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Listen, if he's wiping up the mess already, why can't you just step out and let him clean it up? Amen. If he is healing your body and he's He's making you whole again. Why are you still claim? Why, why are you still claiming that your body is still sick? Amen. If you, if he's wiping out your debt and clearing up your finances, Amen. Why are you saying that I ain't got no money at all? I don't care if it's true that you ain't got one cent in your pocket, Amen. You got to speak as though as though your pocket's overflowing. You got to speak as though, though, Amen. That you are healed, Amen. You got to speak, Amen, as though that all has been forgiven, Amen, Amen. I, I was talking to Cuz. He said you. You ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to apologize for anything. Let Jesus vindicate you on what needs to be done. Now, I'm talking to somebody. Everybody got an answer for all your problems, but they never come up with a solution, amen, on how to move past the problem. I, do I got somebody, you talk about the problem, but you don't come up with a solution how to move past, move past the problem. We sit in a society that want to hold on to your mess. We sit in a society right now that want to continue to tell you that you are still afflicted with pain. 
We sit in a society right now where they say that if you know that you continue, you're going to be all by yourself. Amen. We sit in a society right now where they say that it's, it's bad to be all by yourself. You know what they said? That it is not good for a man to be alone. Amen. But that scripture was taken out of content. Amen. Everybody has this opinion about your relationship, your marriage, everything that you do, but they never has a solution to their own problems. Come on. The person is telling you everything, what you do, what you should do, but they got more problems than you do. Amen. They tell you how you should uh, how you should handle the things, but when you look at them, they're handling things all all wrong or they have the things all messed up. There are some battles in life, elders, right here, that, that long for what? Respect. There are some battles in life right now that long for you to react. There's some battles in life right now that cause you to take, take them with you everywhere you go. Am I talking to someone this morning? We got battles deep that we carry with us everywhere that we go. We, we come out of the hospital room, uh, uh, out of the hospital, knowing that we have been uh, healed or the doctors have given up medicine, and we walk back out with the same affliction, saying that my body is not better. Uh, this is this is not the right group to this morning, amen. We walk out of the courtroom knowing that God has freed us from whatever cases were, and then we go right back saying that I'm on what? I'm on probation, I'm on parole. Am I talking to somebody? We walk out of a job right now saying that, listen, I don't know if I'm going to come back here tomorrow or whatever, but when you get ready to walk off the job and you ain't got nothing lined up, you're going to have what more problems than you had before you left the job. See, you had income coming in. You had medicine coming in. You had all these things coming in, but you listened to everybody else and you chose to walk off of the job. Amen. Great faith, we stand alone in these battles. And it may seem as though that you have been deserted. It may seem as though that people have walked away and left you all by yourself at times. We all got family members that we try to call on the phone and ask for whether it be moral support, whether it be financial, or wherever it may be, spiritual support, and they don't answer the phone. We have always had family members that uh, uh, we just thought that we could depend on, but when we find ourselves in these things, they're nowhere to be found. For the longest, Greta Faith, I used to blame my mother for leaving me when she passed away. I used to hold this thing on the inside and I used to blame her for, the, uh, for leaving this family by, her, by themselves. I used to think to myself that why would you leave a family, and especially a young boy or me and my twin who was just a couple months old, why would you leave us in a time where we, def we definitely need you? And a lot of people here right now probably lost mothers and probably lost uh, family members that we thought should have been here with us forever. Amen. We have lost people that were so close to us and they left us all by ourselves. Didn't we? we lost our mothers and we thought that they should have been here with us until the very end. We lost our mothers and we thought that they should be here with us to the very end. But we don't understand the plan or the reason why God does that. The only thing that we know is that I could just look at you and say that she had a great son by the character that you present. I can look at you and say that she did a great job with you because the person that you are. Come on, am I talking to somebody? Yeah. I can look at you and say that she did a wonderful job because of the lady that you are or the woman that you are or even our father. I can look at him and say, man, it had to be a great woman or a great man because looking at you and about you acting, you are showing what characters of a good man and a good woman because you're not acting crazy, you're not acting foolish, which caused me to say this what I'm standing on my own because the rest of my family may be acting crazy. Am I talking to somebody? They gotta be at least one person in your family that got to have a sound mind. They got to be one person in your mind, in your family right now that got to have the spiritual side to, to carry the family alone. Come on. There has to be one person right now that got to pray for the whole family. There got to be one person inside this church that got to pray for this church when the rest of the church has lost their mind. Am I talking to somebody? It calls for one person to stand all by themselves. But when you have a whole church there, family, that seems to sway from left to right and don't know what is the truth or don't stand, can't stand on what is righteous, then we'll have a bunch of 
church member that's always continuing to do this one little thing, gossip. They continue to gossip, they continue to conflict, elder, they'll keep it going. And keep in mind, I'm getting ready to flip this all the way around, keep in mind that while you've been standing alone, God has been waiting for you to step away from the mess. Come on, come on. He's been waiting for you to step away from the mess. We we claim, Lady Nancy, that we are stepping away from the mess and we're standing by ourselves, but we find ourselves standing right in the midst of the mess. Am I talking to somebody? We stand it right in the middle of the mess. Meaning is that when God wants to bless you, how can he bless you if you're surrounded by a bunch of mess? How can God give you increase if you're what? You've been blocked by a bunch of mess. I, I told y'all before they flip my way. How can God do what he want to do for you if you continue to allow a bunch of mess? Greater faith as a church, we stand alone. We stand alone on the principles as well as the concept of Jesus Christ. And oftentimes I hear people who are uh, who are uh, from different religions, different denominations, saying this is the reason why I don't deal with church folks. I can't stand church folks. I don't want to be around church folks. I don't want to talk to church folks because right on time, church folks never disappoint. I, I got to have some people here right now. Right on time, church folks never disappoint. They always show up just like I knew they would. They always act out just like they knew they would. Amen. Church folks never disappoint. Amen. Y'all can always bet on church folks. Amen. To always stay divided. Always stay apart. Can't come, come together to worship God. Can't move the church along. Can't receive what God has for them. Church folks always show up right on time. Act up, act out, and show it in this way. I gotta have some people, amen. And me myself is not included, amen. It's not excluded because I done something last week, amen, that showed that I am a church folk, amen. Because I let the devil get inside of me and have his way, and I had a bunch of people around me, and I messed up and slipped up, but thank goodness God was there to help me what? To clean up. Y'all not, y'all, I said we're gonna flip that, amen. Right on time, elder, right on time, I, I, I did what church folks did. And, and keep in mind, God has blessed us with something the day before, amen, to show us what we can have, amen, if we stick together. Come on, am I talking to somebody? Church folks, we got to learn how to stick together if we want to see increase from God. Amen. Everybody want to stand alone. Everybody has boundaries. Everybody has rules. Everybody has this and that. But nobody wants to stick together when it comes to moving the kingdom of God. No one wants to be praising and worship God together because everybody has their own agenda. Everybody got their picture how the church should look, how the church should act. Amen. But the thing about it is that who's painting the picture inside of your mind. I gotta be talking to somebody. If the church is gonna grow, if the church is gonna move, it's gonna take for us to get away from the church folks, amen, and get with the believers of Christ. Am I talking to anybody? You got to go away the church folks, amen. And what do you mean by throwing away the church folks, amen? You got to stand by yourself as a church, amen. If that church ain't doing what God wanted to do, amen, greater faith, can you be the church that God needs you to be, amen? Amen. Can you show up, amen, in season as well as out of season? Can you show it up when you're facing with conflict and all type of affliction? Am I talking to somebody when the devil has already picked his battle, amen? He will look around the room and, and pick out who he's going to use, amen, to bring the church down. I got to be talking to somebody. You got to ask yourself, amen, mm, did he use me a time or two, amen, as a leader? I can't say he did use me, amen, and I'm sorry, greater faith, I'm sorry, family, amen, that I let him use me in a way that has never been displayed, amen, and I tell you, mom, as long as I stand on this word of God, amen, there will never be another display, amen, but I didn't say there won't be no passion behind the work that I do for God, amen. Do I got somebody said that even though I work for God doesn't mean that I don't have a passion 
for God, amen, amen. and his people. Amen. And his people, Elder. I got a passion for his people. I, I told Brady Faith, talk about me and, and attack me all you want, amen. But don't mess with the people, watch this part, that God has assigned me, amen. And I'll say it again, God has assigned me, amen, my flock, amen. Just as though I have been assigned to my flock, amen. So don't tell me, amen, what God has not given me, amen. Remember the song that we said that write the vision, Amen. And God gave what the God meant. God gave the what the head shepherd the vision. Amen. He didn't give it to no sister. He didn't give it to no brother. He didn't give it to no mother. He didn't give it to no father. He didn't give it to. I'm sorry, deacons. He didn't give it to the church members. He didn't give it to nobody. Amen. He gave it to the man of God. Amen. To lead the what the people of God. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Sometimes, greater faith, amen, we lose our way and we forget the positions and the title that God has given us. Preach it. Come on. Which caused me to seem as though I'm standing all alone. Meaning is that although you may be doing one thing or you may be acting up, I may not be able to stand with you. I tell Deacon there all the time, I told him I said that in the Bible there was a, one of the wisest, mo, most wisest kings there was, King Solomon. When he got anointed and got appointed to be the king, the, one of the things that he had, he asked, um, what, what asked him, what do you want right now? What do you want? You can have anything and it'll be granted to you right now. And Solomon, King Solomon said that I want wisdom. And I'm always telling deacons, I'm always telling the deacon, ask God for wisdom to judge and also to lead the people. They're gonna come with you with all type of conflicts. They're gonna come with you with all type of things saying, okay, the pastor's doing this, the pastor's saying that, and, and I feel as though I'm not getting the position that I want. I want to sing, and I'm sorry that, you know, passing the use of wisdom, he said, I see that you should have worked here, or you should do this as well. Amen, the vision comes to the pastor, the deacons are to assist the pastor, and the members of the church are supposed to lift up the kingdom that God has given us to work in. And so then we use this wisdom to make sure that the church is being what? It's being progressed and pushed into further along to do the kingdom of God. We don't use this wisdom to gain anything over each and every one of you in this church. Our wisdom is coming to lead and also to pray when you can't even pray for yourself. It's also to what read scripture to you when you don't even want to read. And sometimes we need that from somebody outside of the church. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? So it's great to have wisdom, but you got to know when and how to use wisdom. You can't use it on somebody to gain something from them. And you can always side with the people who are going against the kingdom of God. This message today, y'all, from Second Timothy, is talking to a leader of the church. And it's talking to leaders in the church. You may be a leader on your business. You may be a leader in wherever you may be or whatever you got. But this word of God is telling you, stand alone. You don't always need people in your corner. As some people say, yes, men, little people. You don't always need those people if God is going to elevate you. Because sometimes you're looking for people and God has already elevated you. Come on, am I talking to somebody? You're looking around trying to find out why they're not with you, but God has already elevated you. And I just give this message. Don't count it against me. Because I'm telling you right now, there's opposition in your church. Greater faith simply been said today because what my cousin was telling me last night, it moved me. That with or without you, I will stand alone. With or without you, I will stand alone. With or without you, I will stand alone. I love you, but I just can't continue to put myself in harm's way. Amen. I love you, but I just can't continue to take the attacks for the ones that say they love, who love me, and also who work with me. We have to stand alone. You yourself is gonna to have to stand alone. Don't worry about the attacks. It's going to happen. But don't bring you, don't bring yourself down from the elevation that God has taken you to. Amen. 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 It's not your hype, sir. 
but it is a message. And it's a message, Greater Faith, saying that if we do not be careful, we'll find ourselves like other churches in Torah We'll find ourselves separated and divided. We'll find ourselves not willing to work with the woman or the man that is sitting right beside you. We have to be careful with the things that we are doing and the things that we are saying. God is moving this church. Right now, he's moving our church and he's moving us so much. He's moving us so much. Amen. He's moving us. And I hold in my hand right here the proof. That's another one in his hand. I hold in my hand that this is proof that he's moving us. Amen. This is our proof that he's moving us. I'm waiting. You get your sermon next week. But this week it is clarification. What I hold in my hand right here is proof. We have bound it up, written down. There's nothing back there. You didn't get the message, did you? Where is that? You did. There's nothing back there. Let's hold it high again. This is proof that God is moving this church. We know that it is proof. And we hold it. Now my paper may look all beat up, but listen, it's over there. And we have agreed that we are carrying this everywhere we go until we walk down those aisles and put it in a basket Amen. and let the deacons do what they have to do with it. Amen. We're happy. Yes, we are. We're so happy with this. Deacon has said, I mean, Deacon said, and, and Sister Magna have their stuff next week. But we're going to get them. They're going to be a fine. But we stand on this message today. It was changed. Like I told you, your, your original message came out of Genesis. But this was a message to us, Elder, this morning. It stopped all the mess. Stop all, uh, how can I say Stop letting people in who are not, not even members of your church. They hold position in our church and they're not even members. And they steady and keep stuff going. They're family members. They're not even members. And they're keeping stuff going. They're church members. And they're keeping stuff going. So I stand boldly here before this camera as well as everybody else and say that I'm sorry for my actions, and I will do better. And going forward, because we have a place that we're going to be in pretty soon, that I'm going to stand alone as your leader. Amen? Amen. And I'm not going to be distracted, and I'm not going to let stuff get me so easy. And I say that, Greater Faith, is that if, if I can come out of character for you like that, and you're not even appreciated, then that tells me that I need to stand alone. Amen? Amen. I'm being honest. If I can come out of character like that, and you don't appreciate it, that means I can stand alone. And I say that is because you keep the stuff alive. You keep it going. I'm trying to move past it. I'm trying to forget it and let it go on. The devil will use anybody and everybody. This is my sermon today to show you that I am, I am a man, I made a mistake, and I apologize before the same group of people, frankly, that I made a mistake in front of. So please forgive me for the things that I said and my actions that I've done on that day. And again, I'm just joking. I'll take off for y'all. You know, I won't let anyone talk about y'all. I won't. And that, that's my sore thing. Is yeah, we that, appreciate you. Yeah. We do. Amen. And I won't do it. I won't let it happen again. I, I'm just joking. But again, uh, just make sure, y'all, that y'all stand up for what is right and not as wrong. That's always, that's all I ask you. 
as a church. So, greater faith, you're going to have to stand alone, do all type of stuff you go through, and know that you are a church. You have been called to be different. No matter who tried to steal your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is a day, this is a day I reckon. And so this is the day here, like I said, though, this is not your typical sermon, but this is, I said here because I want everybody to know um, that we're on a different path. And the only way that we're going to be able to move into that, what we have in our hand, is that we have to clean up what we messed up right here. So they got to take us in to a place that is no mess. Understand, we need y'all to get right, Greater Faith. Members, who associates, if you're going to be a part of us, we need for you to get right. Amen. Amen. We, don't, we don't need the conflicts. We don't need the stuff. Keep going. We don't need to hear stuff on the byways and the highways. Look, again, it was supposed to be something that happened. Happened. We should move past it. And it kept going. And it's still going. Let the enemy keep talking. And by me, the adversary is going to keep doing what he's going to do. Stirring up mess. And it's going to keep using whoever he can. You just got to make sure that you're not the door that he keep coming in and coming out. All right? In Jesus' name. That's all I got. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are they looking at me right now? Come on, Pastor. That's all we got is a message today. Yes. That's all I got. I had to do that because it had to be addressed today. And uh, stand alone. And don't feel wrong. Just don't feel alone just because you have to stand by yourself. All right? Praise is what I do.